Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 78, I believe, of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. As always, it's your host, Charles, and today we've got a great one for you. So I'm actually having Art Not Found, he's a good buddy of mine, on for a repeat episode or a second episode as sort of a follow-up to a previous episode that he had done. So on that first episode, it was an introduction to selling on Amazon kind of teaching you how to get your shop set up, how to find product, how to price it, how how little you can spend to get started. This one, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to get into advertising on Amazon and uh, different ways in which you can uh, effectively advertise uh, to see success and sell more product. But before we do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors These guys have been phenomenal. They've really, you know, kept the lights on for the podcast. And I highly encourage you to check both of them out. There will be links in the description for both of them. The first one is Roundly X. I've been talking about these guys. I fully support what they're doing. I need you guys to go create an account uh, for these guys. What you do is you link your credit or debit cards. And every time that you make a purchase, it rounds your purchase up to the next dollar. Uh, And that spare change gets invested into Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency of your choosing. So it's like the the acorns of crypto. It's really just like the best way to dollar cost average into cryptocurrencies. uh, And it's very stress free. So again, link in the description below. Go check them out if you haven't already. And the second one is CoinFlex. They are a new exchange. I really love what these guys are doing. They're actually the first physically delivered crypto futures exchange, uh, and they have some of the lowest, if not the lowest fees in the market, depending on how much flex you own. Uh, But another big thing that I love about them is the bracket orders that these guys have. It's something that I don't think any other exchange has, and they're going to be running bracket order competitions starting hopefully this week, potentially next week, if not. And they're going to be giving away $10,000 a day. So again, if you guys haven't signed up already, I highly encourage you to do this. There is a bit of a learning curve on the site. Uh, It takes a little while to get used to. And if you do this the day before, you might have a little bit of trouble. So hop on there, create an account, start playing with it, send a little bit of funds over, uh, get it settled, and get ready for these bracket order competitions. Again, link in the description below. Now let's get into it. All right, so Art, I really appreciate you coming on for a second time. Uh, I've been looking forward to this episode pretty much since we did the first one. Uh, For everyone who hasn't heard the first one, this is kind of a follow-up episode, so I highly suggest you going over to that first one, giving that one a listen, and then coming and checking this one out. Uh, can you just give us, you know, some life updates since the last one? I normally like to ask, you know, what did you do before we found crypto? That kind of whole spiel. But we did that on the previous one. Uh, so can you just give us some life updates? Yeah, man. I'm uh, out here in Bushwick, Brooklyn, uh, just living it up. Still selling on Amazon, trading crypto. Um, looking to hopefully uh, uh, start consulting with this company that does. Uh, e-commerce beer sales in new york they kind of figured out a way to uh circumvent these archaic laws that kind of prevent uh breweries from selling their beer online um so it's more of like an e-commerce role like away from amazon like more traditional shopify google ads google display ads things like that um but other than that i'm just chilling still same old same old old Good shit, man. I, I, yeah, I feel like you're just constantly doing cool shit on the timeline on Twitter. Uh, it makes, <laughs> makes me kind of jealous because I'm here sitting in my room recording <laughs> podcasts all day. Um, but okay, g- good to hear. You're like the king of online sales, man. You've got the Amazon stuff. You're about to pick up this new e-commerce gig. I love it. And I know my audience loves it. So bef- really quick before we get into it, uh, on the last episode, you called Tezos. You're like, I was like, hey, you know, you got any crypto that you're interested in? At the moment, you said Tezos. 
And after that episode, it went on a run from like 130 to 170 or something like that. You know, it was a pretty big run. Uh, anything on your radar at the moment? I actually think it was like closer to 90 cents. Was it that low? Okay, maybe. I think it was like, I feel like it was under a dollar. Okay. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know it went on a massive run. Uh, I, yeah, I maybe nice. I got in at 130 or some bullshit like that. But, um, yeah, it, it was it was nuts. I was like, you know, this guy's this guy's a genius. Uh, you got anything on your radar right now? Um, not really. I mean, I've just been like playing like scalp trades on um, Bitcoin. Um, still got a Tezos bag. Um, I know, you know, like once the bull market really kicks off, things will start to go crazy. It's usually how it goes. Um, but like right now, I don't really think I don't really like see anything that's like screaming at me. Um. I mean, that can change, you know, by tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much just cooling with my Bitcoin and Tezos bags right now. There we go. Uh, and to anyone yeah. who, who doesn't know Art or didn't listen to the last one because you're a terrible person, uh, he's been in Bitcoin since <laughs> 2013. So dude, dude's a legend. He's making some great calls. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate you kind of just talking us through what your bags are before we get into the amazon stuff because this still is technically right on, the crypto entrepreneurs podcast so we had to talk about crypto a little bit there um, of course but okay so you know last episode we kind of did the whole how to get started selling on amazon right and i want to take it a right. step further and i want to talk about advertising on amazon because i feel like that's how a lot of traffic gets driven to your amazon store there's a lot of benefits to running ad campaigns uh, so can you just give us like a high level overview of how it works? Yeah. So basically, um, first you obviously want to make sure that your pro is like you have a tangible product that you can sell online. I assume if you're listening to this, you have figured something out to sell. So the answer would be, yeah, um, you should definitely start advertising on Amazon. Um, Amazon is really, uh, intuitive with the way that they have everything set up. It's pretty easy to figure out, uh, once you're in there. Um, it, it's, you know, I can't really stress enough. It's really just another way to get more eyes on your products and obviously likely, very likely more buyers. Um, I just want to add to, uh, I would definitely start with the Amazon advertising. Don't really waste your money on any other outlets, uh, until you're kind of well established. Um, also just want to add quickly the, uh, return on investment from Amazon ads I find is much higher than, um, other channels just because people are coming there to buy immediately. Um, like it's not like advertising on Facebook where you, you have to worry about someone clicking through to get to the site to purchase. So it's, it's like an after step of action there. So definitely if you're selling products on Amazon, you, um, we'll move into here where I'll also add that, you know, if you're hesitant about it, I know it can be a little overwhelming or seem a little scary. Um, Start with a small product that you know already sells well online. Um, let's use an example here. For instance, if you sell like sports gear, um, like let's say hockey sticks, bats, like uh, sports stuff. Um, let's say you have a tennis racket that's been your like top selling online product. Um, definitely start with an ad for that top selling product. Um, if you only have one product, start with obviously start with an ad for that product. Um, you'll eventually start to see an ROI with this ad. Um, and then maybe, you know, if you want to start bringing in more products that fall under your umbrella, you can, you know, have some ground to set to expand your campaign there. Um, another compelling reason uh, to advertise on Amazon is, is if you're doing Amazon pay-per-click, um, your organic Amazon rankings will improve as well. Um, so Amazon pay-per-click is just the ads to Amazon run. Um, but your organic Amazon ranking um, that's important because that will, you know, have your product showing up in recommended products to buy alongside other products that people are searching. Uh, if you, you know, have a good keyword campaign going, your product will show up first when people search for that, uh, string of text or those keywords. Um, so that's pretty important too. Um, so yeah, I mean, not only is it possible to boost your product sales with Amazon ads, but it can also boost organic, uh, rankings of your products. So pretty, pretty good stuff all around there yeah um, it's it's really like the way to take your amazon selling to the next level there there were a couple mm -hmm. huge things that i did want to touch on there because 
I feel like you're right. Everyone gets very, very overwhelmed. Uh, they're thinking, how do I drive as much traffic as possible? And so they think, okay, I'm going to start right. advertising all of my products. I'm going to ad- throw advertisements out everywhere I can. I'm going to get on Facebook, right. put ads there. Uh, you really do need to start slow, just like we said in the last episode. You know, really start slow, build up your store first, and then once your store is kind of built out, then start running small ads uh, just on Amazon for one product. You'll get the hang of it, and then you can slowly start to expand. Uh, there, you know, there are times when advertising on Facebook, there's a reason to do it and it can generate right. a solid ROI, but I, I kind of do want to focus just on the Amazon stuff. Maybe we can do another episode down the line where, you know, the like quote unquote now experts that we have taught can come on and learn a little bit more. Uh, but for now, right. you know, let's, let's walk through it real quick. Cause I was very overwhelmed when I started. So let's say I've got a store with one single product and I want to start advertising it, right? Can you walk us through exactly how you can run the most successful campaign for that product? Yeah, right on. So basically what you're going to want to start with is creating a well-structured campaign by the category of the product. Um, Me, I'm pretty experienced with AdWords. Um, Google Analytics, and things like that, um, Google Display Ads. So I would suggest, uh, I know most people that are listening to this probably don't have any experience with that. I would suggest the book. Um, it's called Amazon Selling Blueprints by some dude named Scott Volker. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's super high rated. Check that out. Um, that will give you a little bit more of a background without um, me having to go into a long spiel here about um yeah it is like all that kind of stuff um so basically uh the best strategy here is to have for for your products um you know you want a separate campaign for each of the main product categories um and then under each campaign you create an ad group that's more, a little bit more specific so we'll go we'll give you an example here let's say you're selling women's athletic wear um you might want to start with your you obviously, if you're selling one product, you want to start with that. If you're selling a couple products, you probably want to do something like, you know, women's workout pants, women's workout shirts, or women's sports bras. These are just examples. Cool. Um, so from there, under each campaign, you want to create an ad group that's, you know, around a more specific category. So let's say for campaign one, women's workout pants, you, you would have maybe three ad groups in that um women's yoga pants women's running pants women's lounge pants now this isn't to say that this can't be applied to you know just one product that you're selling um i don't know what you're selling but you can apply this technique to one product you would just create you know the category and then you know make a little bit more specific categories underneath that in the campaign um so basically what you want to do there after that if you got that started going um, you'll want to create a list of relevant keywords for each group. Um, I would suggest, and I mentioned this in the first episode, um, check out this tool called SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush. Um, great keyword research tool. Uh, use it all the time. Uh, it's pretty easy to understand as well. Uh, doesn't, there's not a huge learning curve there. Um, uh, again, vi- I think Viral Launch, which is another product I mentioned in the first episode, has some sort of keyword research tool in it. Um, but that will, that tool will also help you as well. Yeah, um, I remember we, so we, yeah, we from talked there, about the both, uh, we talked about both on right. the last episode, but I think viral launch is, you know, most people can utilize it more for finding products. Whereas SEMrush, you can really right. get those keywords and get laser focused on those. Right. So from there, you'll probably want to find like for each campaign, I'd say like, 15 keywords is probably a good starting number. Um, and then from there, you'll craft a relevant ad for each keyword grouping. So what this like really comes down to is like having a solid account structure that will make sure that, you know, your ads are staying relevant, um, which is important because you want to be specific with those because it's going to save you money, obviously. And if you're doing it correctly, it'll increase your uh, ROI. So that's like, a, a extremely critical tip that you keep your 
account structured well. Like it can be easy to get like disorganized with it. Um, Amazon's pretty good with like how they have the like, you know, back end for that set up. So it's not super confusing. But I mean, if you're a first timer, take it slow. Don't, you know, go over the top overboard, try to dump a bunch of money onto something. Um, you know, it's, with these campaigns, it's important to start small. You want to scale. Scaling is like super important on any platform that you're advertising on. You don't want to just dump a bunch of money into something. So you don't know if it's going to work or not. So very important. Take it slow. Um, there is a guide out there on AdWords account structure. I don't, maybe I can like send you the link to it later and you can cl- include it uh, when you put this online. I was going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to try yeah. to have links to pretty much everything in the description for anyone who's listening. I'll have a link to SEMrush. I'll have a link to that book, Amazon selling yeah, it's blueprint. Like, right. There's, it's like a beginner's guide to advertising on Amazon AdWords. I have to find it. I'll find it and send it to you. Okay. Um, perfect. That will definitely help you. Yeah. For sure. So that's kind of like the basic overview of like the first part of getting like a, a campaign structure there. There um, you go. Um, so really yeah. quick before you, you continue, um, I just want to kind of cut in here because you, you mentioned that you want to scale. And I think that is super important, not only with like your actual store, but with your ad campaigns, you also want to do this. Uh, so I had a lot of people last time when we did this, we they reached out because they didn't listen to the episode because they're shitheads and they said oh how much money do i need to start with even today to this day it's been like what a month and some guys yeah yeah it's been a while and this dude still hit me up like hey how much money do i need to start you know this kind of store i'm like hey listen to this episode um for an ad campaign what would you suggest is you know a decent amount of money if you wanted to run it on one to you know a few products uh, probably like a hundred bucks there for like, and I think of like time frame. but I mean like, so the way Amazon works is like, they'll run your budget out, like over the course of days, like you can choose how long you want the campaign to run for. And then like, it'll base your spend off how much you want to allot per day. Um, there. So like, I would say like, if you're, you know, if you're starting a store with like, in the last episode, we said like 500 bucks is like good for starting. Um, I can say for ads, like probably a lot, like another hundred. Um, I mean, I've done campaigns that have spent like upwards of like four grand a month. Um, so like you can really scale it. Like once you kind of, you know, experiment with it a little bit and find out what works for you. But yeah, that's, that's my advice. Yeah. I, I think people don't realize how little money you need to actually yeah, run you don't a need campaign. A lot. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on advertising, but you can do it for such a small amount of money. And I just want to stress that to the people listening uh, because, you know, I I don't want to. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying if you like adding on to what you're saying, like if you do it right, like you'll be fine. You don't need to spend a ton. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to get here. We're trying to teach you guys how to do it right. Um, But okay, sorry. Sorry to interrupt there if you wanted to continue um not really sure yeah, yeah of course go ahead yeah so so like secondly uh now that we have like the campaigns kind of set up this is pretty important you want to create compelling and like a like a kind of an urgent ad copy um so basically like in your ad you want to ensure that your ad text is like not just accurate in terms of describing what you're selling but like, like also try to insert some creativity and humor into your ads. Like if you, if you can, um, it's, you know, saying that might be off putting to some people, but generally that's kind of the way you want to go. Um, there is a lot of, you know, manuals and things out there you can look into to help you, uh, kind of, you know, come up with things to say, but you generally just want to be accurate in describing what you're saying in a witty way if possible. So it's, it's important to stand out, I guess, because there's so much, I guess, like clutter on Amazon. Um, so you, you definitely want to make yourself stand out. Um, yeah. Also add to that um, goes back to uh, product photos, which we talked about a lot on the last episode. Um, so like compelling ad copy and good photos are pretty clutch because there's tons of, there's tons of shit on Amazon that, just looks like garbage like uh in terms of like product photos or descriptions or titles 
if you can, you know, be organized, have a clean product, clean description, um, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of it, it, there's just like you were saying, there's so much garbage on there, and it's very cluttered. And you know, there is also a lot of competition, a lot of people doing it right, sure. which is For why sure. you need to be a little bit more witty and compelling. I think a lot of people, when they think of running an advertisement on something like Amazon, uh, or at least, you know, from the experience of me talking to people, it's just very straightforward. They think someone's going to see it, see the product, and think, buy. Uh, but it needs to be a little bit more right. creative than that to catch their attention because of all the competition that actually is on Amazon. Certainly. Um, and then I'll add to that, like, in, I kind of briefly just touched on it but ensure that your ad copy is like super specific um like you should really describe what you're selling like for example let's say i don't know there's a water bottle sitting in front of me let's say this water bottle um you want to say how many ounces it holds uh or cups it holds um maybe uh if it's like bpa free that's like a, a feature um does it keep my water cold for like a certain number of hours like things like that um so like it might be hard to like put all that information into an ad text. Like don't overthink it. Just kind of like highlight the important information that would make someone want to buy that, you know? Like uh that's kind of my uh my thoughts on compelling copy as well. That's pretty important, especially in ads cuz you don't have a lot of um it's not like a product description where you can list everything. You kind of want to just hit those those important features the main points yeah yeah you you think about yourself you know if you see an ad what compels you to buy a product uh you know what are you looking for uh when it gets in front of you you know that kind of thing uh so it's spot on you can't like you said you can't really go into full full detail with the description but we discussed how to write proper descriptions in the last episode uh so i think once you get that down then you can kind of get a feel for what even the like most important topics are and what you really want to touch on in these ads right on um so from there we'll move into like basically when you want to bid let's say you want to bid on keywords uh on amazon so basically what you want to do while you're brainstorming using semrush to look up some keywords um don't forget about your competitors so like for example um i don't know we'll say like let's say you're selling like backpacks or something, um, you you probably wanted want to bid on terms like L.L. Bean backpacks or like North Face backpacks because those are well known brands that are obviously going to be searched. So if you can you know bid on some of those keywords, you'll definitely show up uh, in there. Um, as like you know, let's say you have I don't know what your backpack brand name is, but it, it'll give you more exposure because people will go they'll search for North Face backpacks and they'll scroll. And they, there's a probability that they'll see you in that listing. There we go. Um, so that can, give, that can give you more exposure. Yeah, you kind of want to sure. ride the coattails of other successful right. companies. Right. Definitely. Um, that's not to say like rule out g- generic keywords, but kind of, you know, if you're bidding on, you know, if your product has a certain feature, you definitely want to bid on those words. But also keep in mind, it might be helpful to, if you're a small, small seller, it might be helpful to bid on uh things like that relevant to your what you're selling completely um, agree yeah you know if you want to find your competitors you can just do like in regards to this backpack example um you would just maybe search backpacks and see what comes up the most in your results and maybe i will give you like a little jumping off point of you know what direction to go in there we go i was gonna say if you yeah. if you don't know your competitors already you got bigger issues um but no, that's that's perfect. I feel like not a lot of people think to ride off the coattails, as I said, uh, of their bigger competitors. Because you're right, you know, if someone's going to search for a backpack, they are probably searching one of the bigger names and then kind of going from there. So they're searching North Face or Jan Sport, um, and then kind of making their decisions from there. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, and then. There's also, so there's like a couple different ad types. There's like sponsored product ads, which I think I would, if you're starting out, I would definitely use those first. Um, I, I've, my experience have seen the fastest and most visible re- return on investment with those. 
Um, there's also headline search ads, which are more like banner ads at the top. I, f- I feel like those are a little bit more expensive um, from my experience. Um, it might be different for you. I don't know what you're selling. Um, but I feel like those would probably lead to more loyal repeat buyers. But I definitely think start with sponsored product ads as opposed to the headline search ads. Um, but exper- again, experiment um, a little bit. See what your statistics come back with. Um, I should add too, Amazon has great reporting tools. Yeah. Well, they're, they're decent reporting tools. I mean, like some of the things you, I mean, in my experience, like I've worked for bigger, bigger brands. So like some of the things I want to do, I can't really do. But as a small seller, you know, starting out, you they're very extensive. You'll be able to get a very clear picture of what's working, what's not working for you and how you might want to reallocate your budget based on the results of what you're seeing. I was going to, sure. I was going to bring that up. It's, it's kind of like finding stuff to sell. Uh, like when we talked about last time, you can kind of test the water, see what works, see what doesn't exact right. same thing for advertising. Uh, you get all of those kind of analytics after the fact or, you know, while you're running them, I guess. Um, and you can kind of see what has worked, what hasn't, uh, and it is this kind of game of trial and error, uh, which is why, sure. you know, you like we talked about last time, oh, this is like the minimum budget. You will obviously do well with a higher budget because you can kind of mm-hmm. test the waters a little bit more. Uh, but again, there's no one perfect formula. It's not like this is the perfect ad uh, because then everyone would be running them. They would not be as successful. Uh, so you kind of just have to get in there, play around uh, and see what works for yourself and your product and your store. Right. Um, that kind of also leads us into uh, negative keywords, which are uh, a pretty great thing. Um, this is like kind of narrowing it down more, um, but these will really help you get rid of a, like negative spend, I could call it. Um, so like I'm kind of used to advertising on Google, Google display ads and stuff like that. Um, so it's the same thing. Negative keywords are, are basically used to reduce wasted spending from irrelevant clicks. Um, I'm trying to think of an example here. Um, let's say, uh, I don't know, you sell, uh, I don't know, like uh, flutes, like musical. Let's say you're selling like musical flutes, right? So when you think about it, you might be bidding on the word flute, obviously. Now, think about this. Maybe someone's looking for champagne flute glasses, right? And then they're seeing you're, they're clicking on your ad and that <laughs> like your ad gets so popular if you're bidding on that word. Right. Cool. So then they accidentally click on your ad and then you're getting charged for someone that's looking for like a cheap glass rather than a, a more expensive instrument. So that, you know, you can use negative keywords to your advantage really well. Um, there's definitely some other courses out there um, to like help you with that. But um, it's it's kind of you know you start playing around you get the hang of what works for you what doesn't work for you experiment um, you know but uh, they're definitely pretty pretty important like yeah. if you can work all what I just said in this episode together you'll be on a pretty good footing to sell your products on there um, for sure so another thing to add is like kind of you know be conservative with you know what your uh, you know, advertising at what keywords you're bidding on. Um, I guess like, don't be too broad. Um, you know, put like a higher emphasis on phrasing and exact matching rather than just like large words like that, like broad words like that. Um, and again, obviously make sure you're, you're conducting some keyword research to see that you're targeting the right words for what you're selling. Um, but I mean, again, there's like so much more to, to Amazon advertising. Um, like I think like the plat, I mean, the platform is only growing. I've been using it for a while and you know, it's always constantly improving. Um, yeah. but no, I mean, I, do you I, have anything I, to add? Well, no, I actually think that this is like, you know, what you have mentioned specifically is like a great jumping off point and a great starting point. Right. And I think that's, you know, that's kind of my theme of the show. It's never like a, you know, super fine tuned. This is exactly what you need to do. It's always like a, Hey, here's a jumping off point. This is kind of, you know, the main, the few main things that 
you, the quote unquote expert, knows that you want my audience to know. And I don't want to overwhelm them with too much information because right. selling on Amazon is, you know, a beast. Like the, you can have courses that go on forever, books that go on for, you know, pages and pages and pages. This is hour two of, you know, a podcast. So it's like, I just want my audience to kind of get familiar with it, hear a few of the main key points, and then they can go off and explore it themselves or research it a little more. Uh, So I think that was perfect. Uh, If there's anything else you want to add quickly, I wouldn't mind it. But honestly, I think that alone, I think my audience is going to need to go through and listen to it a couple times just to get all the points that we've already talked about. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it, like, uh, in a nutshell. Um, my DMs are open. I know people might have questions, so you can hit me up on Twitter, um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But, um, I mean, yeah, lastly, I guess I would just add, add like, uh, product photography um, is another thing that's kind of important um, to selling the product. Like, you want to definitely have at least, like, five photos of the product if it's a product you can't you know physically photograph yourself i mean you can get you can use a damn iphone like now because the iphone cameras are good enough and like if it's a small product or a bigger product you know buy some um like make your own light box like look up how to do that um get like a steady light they're, they're cheap as hell i think you can get them for like 50 bucks um and you can just like photograph it yourself self on your iPhone, um, tweak it a little bit in Photoshop. Um, you know, there's tools out there that will help you with that. Um, if it's a product that's like, you know, maybe you're drop shipping it in a sense, or it's, you know, you're sourcing it from somewhere else, find a photo studio. There's a lot of photo studios in China. There's a lot of photo studios in India that will do it for cheap. They'll retouch for you for cheap. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's, that's pretty important too. And I think that like, is the last thing I would add to to all of this, um, the product photography. There we go. Yeah, and we, we touched on that yeah. a little bit in the last, last episode. Time, right? Yeah, but I'm really glad you're bringing it up because it is one of the most important things. I just want, like, my big thing is when someone's listening to this, I want them to think about their experience on Amazon, and that really mm-hmm. helps with things. Uh, like, when I'm cruising through Amazon looking for stuff to buy, the photo is what grabs my attention. I will then read through the description if it's something that's a little bit more generic and that's where I'll pick up on if I want to make that purchase or not. But the photo is really what grabs my attention as I'm scrolling through the list of a billion things that are sold on Amazon. Uh, yeah. So I, I think those are those are pretty much the key points that I want everyone to kind of understand to at least get the ball rolling. You said your Twitter DMs are open. Mine are also open for anyone who wants to reach out with questions. Both of us can help you out. Please do. Um, and I, I think, you know, that that's good on the Amazon advertising. I, I'm really stoked on it. Uh, you know, I always like to ask, you know, what you're most stoked for in the next 12 months. You got any big, you talked about this big update with this beer e-commerce thing that you got going on. Uh, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that anymore, if you've got anything else big in the pipeline. I remember last time yeah. you, you were talking about uh, locking that girlfriend of yours down jokingly, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, soon. That's happening soon. There we uh, go. Yeah. Um, what else? Let me think. Um, yeah, that e-com- the e-commerce beer startup, that's that's a pretty dope gig. I'm hoping that works out. Um, like... It's really, it's really a time that that industry is gets disrupted. It's very ripe, um, and they're early on it. So I would, I hope I can get in with them and uh, aid them there, um, because there's like so many archaic laws in that industry right now. Like craft beer is another like industry that's that kind of blew up. I want to say like 2012 that started getting like really big, at least on like the kinds of beers and like people getting involved in that shit. Um, but like there has just been these archaic laws for so long um, in that industry that they just need to be disrupted. So this company is definitely on the right track there. So hopefully I can help them out. Um, right on, man. I don't know what else. Yeah. I think as far as like crypto goes, I definitely think we'll see a much higher Bitcoin price by the end of this year. Um, 
things are just starting to look kind of ripe, at least to like what I'm looking at and what I'm hearing from other people. Um, oh, I've, so been, I've been we'll bullish. I've there. been bullish for about a month to my demise, two months, yeah. three months to my demise. But uh, no, I yeah. think I think uh, there's a storm of brewing. Uh, I'm very bullish long term on Bitcoin. I think if you're not, you're an idiot. Certainly. Um, so now yeah, I, I think stock market in terms of stocks, like I've had Tesla for a long time. Um, Apple, I got like Apple and Amazon back in like 2012. I kind of just held bags of those. Probably sell them sometime, I would say, within like the next year or two. But I don't know. It's like stock markets, like I don't really actively trade stock market like I do Bitcoin. Like I kind of just like bought a bunch of stuff when I started one of my first jobs, like back in like 2012, 2013. Um, and kind of just been like observing. Like I didn't put in a lot. I kind of just like that was kind of like like a 401k type deal where I just like put money in, just going to let it sit, see what happens. So that worked out well, but I really don't trade it. So I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens with the election. I, that could definitely tank the market. I think if Trump loses, I think the market would probably go to the shitter just because he's loosened up so many regulations on stuff and has just been like pumping the shit out of the market. <laughs> so, like, dude, I just saw, I, don't know. I just saw a screen grab of, I think it was either Amazon or Facebook or Apple or something like that just parabolic it is insane yeah, it is. It, when like, does it go down yeah it, it doesn't and like no that's the thing that's that's my issue recently i've been seeing a lot of posts on why now is the worst time to sell why you should be buying right now everyone's kind of right, right. seeing this euphoria um but yeah. i think i think trump you're right has very much loosened up a lot of the laws it's become a lot more lax which has allowed businesses to continue to thrive and stocks to just pump through the fucking roof. Uh, and if there <laughs> isn't a re-election, things could tighten up a little, and I think the market re will react to that in a negative way. Um, right. So I think you're pretty spot on with everything that you're calling right now, and I think yeah. our, our yeah. mindset aligns pretty pretty well. Yeah, I know you still got like the simps on Twitter calling for like 4K bitcoin and shit i think that's <laughs> well well past yeah yeah like, yeah. yeah i mean, I mean I, I'm just not from gonna, what i'm like go ahead i was just gonna say i'm not gonna pretend like i know where bitcoin's going in the next you know two months or so but okay. i i do not think we will see that low of a price uh we might you know spike and then drop back down a little bit but i i don't think we're seeing 4k ever again yeah, no. Um, yeah, I definitely think the price will will be higher at the end of the year. There we go. For sure. I, I like that. Not yeah. not how much higher, just it will be higher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree mm -hmm. with that. Um, okay, so a any any other you know big outlooks? Anything else big in the pipeline before we get to the the last question? I like to ask. No, nothing really. That pretty much sums it up. Just out here holding it down in uh, Bushwick. Yeah, you're killing it out there, man. I said it once, I'll say it again. Um, okay, so you know I like to do the kind of wrap-up, right? So if right. you had to give us your biggest tip to advertising on Amazon in just like one point, what would that one tip be? Uh, good photos. Good photos. Okay. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's what sells a product. Yeah. No. I've seen it like every, every company I've worked with consulted with uh friends i've talked to like that's it like if you have a nice product photograph maybe like you know if you can uh show it showcase it in like a lifestyle setting um that's what people want to see like it'll drive, it'll drive them to you know buy the product yeah we, that's the most important yeah you we, know? we talked about that whole lifestyle shot uh in the last episode and I think people want to skimp on the photo, so I'm glad that this is your biggest tip. Yeah, don't. Um, because it is so essential to have that like attention-grabbing photo that brings them into then read your description, which is also extremely important. But it really is that photo and then the title as well um, that grabs their attention yeah. as they're kind of scrolling through Amazon. Um, so don't skimp on it. You know, it's a one-time thing. If you're selling one specific product and you plan on selling it for a while and really kind of fucking 
attacking it for as long yeah, as exactly. possible. Yeah, exactly. Why would you? Yeah. Don't skimp on it. It's like one time payment up yeah, front, you... and you've yeah. got it for the rest <laughs> of the product's life. So I, I, I hate. Do not skimp on that. No, I like. I see like you know as I'm scrolling through Amazon trying to buy shit, I see people taking, you know, pictures with their Nokia on their brown carpet, and I'm just like, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna buy right. this. Yeah. On principle, I can't buy yeah, this. You want to look professional, white background, keep it simple. Exactly. If you don't, you know, if you're going to do a life, if it's a product that you can do a lifestyle shot, you know, do that well. Um, that's all. That's, I mean, that's the biggest tip, really. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate you kind of singling that one out. Uh, yeah. And I really appreciate you coming on. I, I have a blast with these episodes just because this is kind of up my alley. Uh, and I know a lot right of on. people on Twitter are kind of trying to make that break away from crypto, especially because we saw a downtrend forever and people are all depressed and shit. And shout out to my new podcast that will be starting soon. Everyone needs to go listen to that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think people are trying to kind of, you know, generate new sources of income. So I like bringing you on for the Amazon yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Before we go, is there anything else that you want to go off on? I, you know, you're the king of going off on Twitter <laughs> go off on my podcast okay. a little yeah i don't know what what let's can, what can we talk about what's up with like all this recent like censoring bullshit going on they took carbon based off twitter because he do the like whole friend shit i i like i don't i don't even know how they got him off twitter but yeah he's been censored i i saw yeah, they took doc off they took like uh who the fuck they took p tokes off they took a whole bunch of took a whole bunch of my dudes man yeah. <laughs> see yeah that's that's like those are some good buddies on twitter there was also mm. a little sector of twitter that i don't know if you interlace with or like intertwine with it's another group of crypto people and i saw someone post a thread of like eight different accounts that had gotten suspended or yeah. banned it's like what is going on yeah they don't i know i don't know why they're cracking down they don't want us to to, to thrive man they're pushing this agenda that we need to buy into the stock market <laughs> and deleting all the Twitter accounts that are uh, shilling crypto. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I think it's funny too. You got like all those like Bitcoin maximalists, like big shots that, you know, censor ship resistant currency, but then someone will make fun of them online and they, they like report the person and get them banned. Yeah. Like, yeah. God. Okay. I, I actually had, <laughs> yeah, I had Reptar on to talk about censorship and that was a while ago. It was probably like my... Right. I listened to that episode. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably like my 10th episode or something like that. That was before I even really was like, you know, homies with him. And uh, right. I just listened to it back because I'm kind of mapping out all of my episodes where you can do like a little click to jump kind of thing for when I get my website set up. And I listened to that one. And I was like, dude, I'm going to listen to this thing in full. So I was just kind of just jumping around finding the main topics. I listened to that one in full and it applies so much to what's going on today with these guys oh, and what's happened yeah. with carbon. It, it like it really, yeah. really bothers me. I, I probably shouldn't be as bothered by it. Uh, right. But the, the, the high and mighty I mean, maximalists, man. They Yeah. yeah Reptar is really good at calling those trends though. He's yeah. always ahead of the curve. Oh like yeah. That. yeah. That was, that was, yeah, that was a really fun episode. For anyone who wants to listen to an episode on censorship, scroll back to almost the beginning. Um, you can listen to that one. It very much applies to what's happening today. What else, man? Yeah. You, you have free reign here to go off on, you know, anything that you want. I don't know. A lot of these, yeah, I think a lot of these big accounts too are like, it's like you can tell the people that got, like, I mean, Bitcoin's been in a downtrend for what? like six months i think it like kind of just broke out but like there were six months there from like july or was it like june it was july, july or Cause, june cause where I, like, I quit my job yeah. at the top like, right you can tell like the, the accounts that got like wrecked because they just like post like stupid shit now like i guess i'll just name names but like michael nye Lil uzi whatever the fuck coin they just post like memes and shit now you can tell like these people obviously got owned. I think Michael Nye is like trying to rap or something, dude. It's like the most cringe shit I've ever seen. 
Oh, I can't, he made like an account. To, like, post his raps. No, so that's actually a fan it's account. So and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna defend Nye. I I've defended Nye for <laughs> pretty. I know. Yeah, and we're gonna have our differences here. And a lot of our friends that's online totally cool. hate that I fucking defend Nye. I get shit in architects all the time. But uh, he's actually local. We've hung out multiple times. I think he's a super cool dude. Oh, right on. I mean, if you know the dude, that's, yeah. He posts cringe. Yeah. Like, I, I, I tell him he posts cringe. His TikToks are cringe. I told him <laughs> to get off TikTok. Stop talking to the 14-year-olds. But I, mm. I, I do, you know, it's easy to hate on him. But I do respect anyone who is kind of trying to build themselves up in any way. And he's trying to build a brand and you know, a rap career, I, I can't say that it's going to work out, but I, I can't, you know, actively root against anyone who's trying to kind of build up their own business or brand, uh, trying to make money in a non-conventional way. So I can defend him, but I do want to get into these fuckers that are just posting memes all day and it's like ripped straight from Facebook. Yeah. Like, you're not a crypto yeah. account anymore. What is that about? Like, I... They're just like, yeah. You know, I'm a, it's like you got that wrecked. Damn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name a name here, and I'm cool with him. But Bagsy, Bagsy does this a lot, where he'll post just yeah, like yeah, Bagsy loves to do that. Dude, he loves posting just like food memes and stuff, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, this is crypto Twitter. You don't get to do that here. You don't get that clout. Um, but you don't get the clout. No, yeah, he, <laughs> you're not allowed to have that engagement from me. Um, but yeah, no, what I. About people- I what about think, people who are who post like useful shit? Like I think uh, if you're into like traditional stocks, uh, Cassius Boy, Cash Boy, R.I.P. Dude, uh, his main account, and but he posts like he has a Telegram channel that he posts like all his trades in, and it's like free, and it's like he's a very good uh, like legacy market trader. There we go. Yeah. I don't really trade legacy that much, and he I don't think he's been doing too much Bitcoin trading, but that's a guy to check out. Yeah, yeah so he, for sure. it's funny the two people you bring up Nye and and Cash. Uh Cash th- I don't I didn't even want to like make anything of this and like bring it up ever, but like I noticed recently that he had blocked me. And I was like, "Man, I enjoyed his account. Like, I don't know what happened. Mm. I thought we were cool and then all of a sudden I'm not seeing him on my timeline. I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to see what he's up to." And blocked for some reason. So I think he only follows like he only follows like 100 people. Well, no, he was like he that. was following very me. low number. I, I don't even care about the follow. Like he was following me, we would interact with each other. I'm just trying to figure out what I did for him to be like, "Nah, you're blocked." Um, so <laughs> I don't know what happened, man. And like he's cool. I don't know. He's cool with all of like the people that I'm cool with online. So I don't really know. Um, I'm not gonna push it, but yeah, no. Like up until I stopped seeing his stuff, uh, he was killing it. I I support people who are posting legacy market shit um you know it is yeah crypto twitter but good for them for branching out and trying to teach the idiots who only know bitcoin a little bit more uh, i know a couple people who are you know constantly... yeah definitely I, yeah i mean like a couple people in, in my circle like have been killing it uh with uh legacy markets like just like trading stocks and shit the last couple months have been just like nuts for that i even have like couple buddies that are just like not even on twitter or anything like that that just like uh, bought tesla like a long time ago you know they have their apple they have their amazon and they they put like i think my so i'll rephrase that my one good friend um his cousin works like pretty high up at tesla and he he's has made just like a killing that was the reason i got into tesla like a while ago um because he would like talk it up all the time he actually worked originally for uh solar city which is like a company owned by elon musk um they forget exactly like what their mission is but like i think they some sort of like solar like installation kind of like similar to like a sunron or like this company like that um but basically kind of just like It, like make it easy for like manufacturers people to install like commercial solar panels like in their house on their house and shit like that it was like one of the earlier companies to do that and i got this tip from this guy to like buy tesla when it was cheap and like i did it and he he has like he must have like millions in the bank from that shit jesus because he's been working there for a while 
and like he'll like go into meetings and shit and like he's seen elon and shit there yeah so like he's pretty high up he knows what's going on behind the scenes he kind of sees the vision of tesla as a whole damn right i think a lot of this shit too with investing is just like having conviction with like what you believe in um without a doubt i mean like you look at the people who made shitloads of money on Bitcoin. It's the people who bought right. early but then didn't sell because I think that's the harder part when you see an investment up 100, 200, 1,000 percent is to then sell it. Um, right. But Bitcoin since inception, I think I just saw an article, 9 million percent in 10 years. Like that, that's absolutely mind blowing to me. And I think yeah, you're, that's, you're that's very insane. right in the fact that you just need to have this conviction and say, you know, okay, it's gone up this much. People are starting to catch on. Now it's going to run some more. Right. Yeah. I mean, just got to have conviction, bro. That's really like what it is. At least for me, I find my best trades have come from just, you know, setting my emotions aside and doing research on a project and, uh, you know, um, like doing enough research on a project that I'm confident in it and that it will perform. Um, I know like like, there's a lot of people and it's like become rampant obviously since 2017, but there's people out there with like 50 bucks and they'll just like put it in whatever shit coin and expect to get rich. And that's like not how it works. You know, like you'd be, you'd you'd have made more money if you like, I don't know, put that 50 bucks into Bitcoin. Like you would have been fine. Yeah. Like instead of going off on whatever shit coin has just been, like XRP or whatever the fuck has been pounded into the ground. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's just like my two cents there. Do your research for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, like I said, that's how I've all, all my good trades I've come from like just extensive research on, on a subject. I mean, getting into Bitcoin early was definitely helpful, but since then, yeah, you know, see, it's, it's, it's hard for people because everyone's so lazy that, I feel like they don't yeah. want to do their own research. And it's funny that the, the motto, yeah. the motto of right. our industry is, you know, two mottos are don't trust verify and then do your own right. research. And I feel like neither of those two things are ever really enforced or yeah. implemented. Um, yeah. I was digging around. What was I? I was so like, I still have Facebook. I know I should probably delete it, but I was digging around in this. So I was in a crypto group. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's like Crypto Coin Trader or like Crypto Collectors Club. There's like two groups I'm in. And like the people in there, dude, just have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Like 99% of those people have no clue what they're talking about. And I know crypto Twitter gets like a lot of shit for like people being stupid. And like, you know, you got all these like, you know, you got the inverse bra making fun of people that just like post like retarded shit. Um, but like you go into like crypto Facebook and it's a whole like just cesspool of like brainlet people that have no idea what they're doing. And it's pretty entertaining to look at every once in a while. And I know crypto Twitter gets a lot of shit, like a lot, you know, there's a lot of idiots on it. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's definitely much, a much better resource than, you know, Reddit or Facebook. I mean, nothing beats doing your own research, but you know. There are some good people on crypto Twitter that are very helpful. Oh, I, I think the accounts on crypto Twitter are unmatched anywhere. I yeah. I recently just branched out into crypto Instagram and crypto Facebook. For yeah, the, crypto Instagram <laughs> is a thing. Man. For, for yeah. the podcast, because, you know, I wanted to kind of get my reach out there as far as possible. And uh, mm-hmm. I, fuck, fuck both of them, because yeah. you're right. Facebook's, They're just bad. Yeah, Facebook's just a cesspool. Uh, yeah, total cesspool couple groups i've joined it's just been shilling like legitimate scams like give us two thousand and we'll give you twenty thousand back uh yep. and then instagram is you know you think of the forex traders on twitter that's instagram everyone's posting pictures of money and all that yeah, shit. Goofy shit like that. and then everyone's story is just tweets so it's like what's the point i really exactly. i really do think that twitter is kind of the hub for cryptocurrency news cryptocurrency trading uh, we're we're very small. We're a little echo bubble, but I think it's it's a great place, and I think that's yeah. where most of my traffic comes from, and it's where I spend a lot of my time. So, to anyone yeah. out there who no. is thinking about getting on Facebook or Instagram, don't do it. Don't bother. Don't yeah. bother. If you've got a Facebook, 
delete your account. We're all short in Facebook. Um, <laughs> anything else? I actually, I, have one yeah. friend. I have. Oh, who, here's another dude that everyone should follow. Uh, his name is Slut Trader. Slut underscore Trader. Um, the dude doesn't have many followers. I actually, he's so I've never met him, but um, this one buddy I have um, in real life uh, that I know, good friend from high school, uh, lives with him. He has a, a uh, crypto Twitter account. He trades a lot of uh, stock market stuff, but he does post Bitcoin takes, and he's generally like never been wrong. The dude's like he only has like two thousand followers. Really good follow. Um, always posting his stuff, like his trades that he's taking. Uh, really, really good guy. Um, that's a great follow too. So if you're into like a mix of you know stock market. Bitcoin crypto markets. Uh, that's a good account to follow. I'm checking out his account right now. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a really good trader. There we go. Looks like a lot of the people that I'm following. I see Chad on there. Chad's yeah. There's him. a few people that yeah, like yeah, giraffe, a couple people. Majin, Chad, Kree and Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. All right, I'll give him a follow. I'll see what see what's up with him. He yeah, has... he's 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 uh he was he's like been on it. He was like, you know, he literally called the top in June. Um, and like back when it bounced in July, he was like, I'm telling you, it's going to go down. It's going to go. You, know, you can scroll back and look at his tweets. Like he was spot on with everything. All um, right. So I, that, dude, that dude's a great follow. You know, an Underrated. endorsement from you is an endorsement from mm-hmm. me. I trust that mm-hmm. to anyone listening. Go give him a follow. I'll throw his his Twitter handle in the description as well. Um, yeah, he's great. What about, you know, thoughts on just life or anything like that? You know, you got anything like that that you need the people of my podcast to know before we go? Oh, man. Um, Don't go off too hard on this one. (laughs) Uh, Don't move to New York. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's it's awesome, but the people are pretty terrible in terms of like, I don't know, there's so much just like goofy shit out here. It's crazy. Oh, I see you posting about it all the time. I mean, I'm out in yeah, California, yeah. so I get some goofy like, ass shit out here as well, too. Oh, but. sure, I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, um, I'm not complaining. I live that, by the beach. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I like the city, but it's just like funny to like knock on all like the SJW bullshit and like other like stupid shit that happens out here. I feel that I, I see it on Twitter enough, and it, some of it, like, I don't know if it was you that was posting some like bullshit books or something yeah that was me <laughs> that was, yeah i was like god damn what is he going through out there yeah it's it's funny man it's there's you know it's it's the i mean it's the greatest city like the, there's so many choices for like food different neighborhoods that you can go to there's so much shit to do but there's a lot of goofy shit that comes with living in a city i feel that all yeah. right man again i i really appreciate you taking the time we got to shoot the shit a little bit afterwards, but I think the bulk of that episode was really on how you can start killing it with the ad- Amazon advertising. Uh, and I'm looking forward yeah. to everyone who's kind of listened to that first episode. This will be a nice follow up for them. Uh, I don't know if you saw the sure. tweet, that tweet that I posted, but you were up there on the top, you know, 19 yeah. of, of 2019. And uh, I think I posted, you know, 72 episodes or something like that. So huge congrats. There's it obviously is- a need. Um, and I, I really appreciate it. Oh, for sure. Time. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, definitely. I mean, my again, my DMs are open. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to help you. Um, you got that sorted then because I remember somebody hit me up. They're like, oh, his DMs aren't open. Yeah, they were closed. They, I don't know. So this is another thing too. Recently, I know there's people have been complaining about this, but like Twitter has been like doing weird shit, like randomly unfollowing accounts on people. Have I saw, you seen that? Yeah, I saw Gainsy post about that. I checked through like who I was following. I'm sure it probably did, but like I'm not huge on checking who's following me, who's you know yeah, who yeah. I'm following. Um, if I well, see you on the timeline, like for for me, like, I knew that band, which wait, wait. I thought was kind of weird. Can you can you repeat that? You just cut out there for a quick second. Oh yeah. So my account, I was originally following Carbon base this was back and then i just noticed one day his stuff was not in my feed and my account had unfollowed him it's very odd 
you know, like I, yeah, it was really weird. And I've seen people complaining about this recently. Yeah, like yeah. Few, I've seen a few people mentioning it. Yeah, no games. So I don't know talking if, about it. Yeah, because like for a while, and I did not close my DMs after we did that first episode. I did get some people messaging me, and then it like, uh, it I guess it closed. Something happened. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, I don't know. Twitter's been weird recently. Very, very odd. But they're very open now. So Jack's Jack's up to his uh normal Jack's up to no good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's how you're talking about Tezos. He's like, uh uh-uh, uh, only Bitcoin. No. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, man, yeah, DMs are open, mine are open as well. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time. Of course, man. Thank you for having me. Keep up the good work. All right, that wraps up another episode. All right, guys, one last shout out before we go. If you guys have ever thought about starting a podcast, I would highly recommend Anchor. It's your one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. When I got started, I hopped on there. It took me two seconds to get the account set up, and then they distributed to all of the major podcasting platforms. Uh, And on top of that, they will match you with sponsors, Uh, for example, like what I'm doing right now, talking about Anchor, and I'm getting paid to do it. Uh, So if you're interested, like I was saying, you can head on over to anchor.fm forward slash start. Again, that is anchor.fm forward slash start. Can't wait to hear you guys' podcast. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I just want to take a quick second to remind you to leave us a review and subscribe to the show. We would greatly appreciate it if you did. And we look forward to seeing you next episode.